How you going, everybody? Uh, this is Simon. Welcome to another episode of COVID Convos. Thanks for coming along and listening in or watching on YouTube. I've got uh, my friends Kesh. How are you, Kesh? Hey, man. I'm doing all right. That's good, mate. And the great Griggsy. How are you, Griggsy? Yeah, good, mate. Looking forward to this one. Yeah, good to see Wait. you guys as usual. How do you, how do you get a how do you get a nickname like Great Griggsy, <laughs> like Alexander the Great? When did that happen? That's a new thing. Just rolled off the tongue. <laughs> yeah, I'll come up with something for you, Kesh, next time, buddy. Feel left out, man. Yeah, we'll work on that. Um, so again, welcome to the COVID convos, where we have real conversations with real people about well, what well-being looks like in uh, a pandemic, like we are at the moment. As uh, per usual, we've got a special guest tonight. I'd like to welcome Martin to the show. How are you, Martin? All right. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Good to see you again, mate. Yeah, you too. Martin, um, yeah, we usually just hand over to the guests first up to just uh, give us a few words about, about themselves and, and their background, um, as little or as much as you like, mate. But uh, yeah, do you want to say a few words about, about yourself and where you're up to? Yeah, no problem. Um, I was a retailer for over 15 years. I've lived in Australia for 13 years. Ooh, I was a retailer for longer than that. Um, gave that up about three, four years ago. My wife's a teacher. Um, I married an Aussie, living the dream. So now I'm a citizen in Australia, but I'm very much English. Um, and the last few years, I've worked as a PT and uh, teach a bit of yoga. Oh, I don't like saying that. Anyway, it all, it all, it all goes uh, together. Um, and then I work casually for a healthcare company in hearing. So um, I definitely understand what's going on in retail at the moment. I definitely understand what's going on at gyms at the moment. Um, uh, and then I understand what it's like being a casual at the moment. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's interesting times, but it's, there's a lot of positivity that's coming out of it. Um, so, yeah, that's me, really. Martin, I have absolutely no idea about any of those roles that you've just, just said you know about. Uh, do you want to sort of, I guess, explain what it is like to be in those positions, particularly, I guess, um, uh, with regards to, ca I think it was a casual or something like that. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, so I just like, because, I mean, you don't make any money as a personal trainer anyway. Um, you definitely have to do it for the love of it. Um, but that's the life we chose. My wife became the earner when she went back to work as a teacher. We've got three young kids, 11, 9 and 7. Um, so I chose to be that extra the bit of beer money, if you like. And I'm, I'm around a lot more. So I do the school pickups and drop-offs, which is something I, I didn't get to do for years. But then in the last six months, I took a casual job. So we could have a bit of extra money and a bit more security. Um, I was just starting to get more and more work. I had, a, had almost a whole week's worth of work this week, uh, which got cancelled last week. Um, and we work with a lot of aged care, so they, I work in a customer service role, but the, it's a hearing company, so the audiologists couldn't visit the, the elderly anymore. Um, so all home visits got cancelled. Um, we tried to redirect them uh, to the on-site places. So there was a lot of work to begin with because we had to rebook everyone, but then obviously that work dries up. Uh, it was, I could see it coming. I knew it was going to come. Um, and that's the life of a casual anyway. You, if you're a casual, you know you're going to be up or down. Uh, it was more harder for the two managers that had to call me to cut the work. I felt really bad for them and almost had to tell them not to, not to worry about it. It's okay. Um, equally, I know that work will come back eventually. Um, so I get that it's tough. And I'm lucky because my wife's a teacher. So there's a salary coming in to pay the mortgage. I could be in a different position where I'm paying a mortgage and my partner may be in a similar position and we can't look a month ahead, whereas we can. So mortgage is covered. I, you know, it's, I don't need to worry. I've lost some extra money, which would have been nice, but it's not the end of the world. Um, 
as for gyms, I, I find the gym I was working at um, have closed and were on the verge anyway. Um, and now the owner isn't reopening after she's been trading in that site for seven, eight years. And um, she's completely closed. So she started selling off her gear. And so that's, that's tough because, I mean, a lot of those businesses were, and will, because it's so competitive, um, were on the edge. The, the, the gym where I met Simon folded 18 months ago. So those businesses that are on the edge, that's really hard. Um, I saw the Prime Minister say um, that Australia needs to stop and every link should support each other. So the casual stops working, the landlord stops asking for rent and the bank has, stops asking for the mortgage. But that's all very well saying that, um, but then that's up to the Prime Minister to go and sort the banks out then. Like if everyone pauses, yeah, that's fine. Um, but... <sighs> It's hard, but I wouldn't say it's more. I think the fear was leading up to it, right? The, the all the panic buying. The we were more worried about. Oh no, what if football stops every night? The kids are out. We're gonna have them at home every day. Oh no, what if school stops? Now it's happening. We're getting on with it. We're, hang, we're hanging out with each other. Um, we're not spending money going out with the kids, um, which we can't afford to do anyway. But I think we're all. We're all getting on with it. Do you, do you guys feel that? I think, um, you know, true. I think humans are incredibly adaptable. Uh, and we're all sort of like finding our way through this mess. But you've actually pulled out a couple of really important things that we haven't had the chance to talk about on the show yet, uh, which is the realities of so many of us in this situation. So many of us are living paycheck to paycheck, right? Mm. There's very, like, the way that the economy has been kind of structuring itself um, means that so many of us don't really have savings to draw upon. We don't have real good assets or wealth to kind of fall back upon. At best, some of us have a couple of months, right? Uh, and yet, we do have the government kind of going, let's ease up and do all this kind of stuff. But even then, with their stimulus package, right, they're just giving money to businesses and businesses don't want to spend that. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, you look back at the recession with Rudd, his stimulus package was giving money straight to people so they could go out there and support people, go mm -hmm. to retail, go and buy a TV. Yeah. That was reckless, but at least it was injecting money back into, you know, our economy and making it a bit more circular. Um, this, I actually have a friend right now that's working with small businesses and they're sort of like banding together and kind of supporting each other like they've got this thing where you know you get a bill you pay a bill right because you know that the small businesses are struggling so you get their services you pay them they pay you um and they're creating their own circular economy because they can't really rely on the economy right now to do it for them mm. right so i just think there's an interesting opportunity here to talk about you know what does it mean to positively what does a positive economy look like right when we can't rely on the economy that we've been given anymore we know that it's not going to work for us I, I, i'm i've been a student for ages i've been a casual for ages i have zero money and, and i've never really had the chance to build up savings so what happens to people like this australia is an incredibly wealthy country it mm. shouldn't be a problem but if i don't get work soon it will be mm. what are we going to do then well i think as well retail has been on its knees for the last 10 plus years, bricks and mortar retail. Um, and I find it bizarre that they're telling you not to go out and mix with people. Don't go to the beach, don't have friends around for dinner. But if you want to buy a pair of jeans from Cotton On, you can, which just doesn't make, make sense to me. And in the last three days, a lot of retailers have closed. Maya closed today. Um, and and they're, not, they're not closing for their staff. Like if they could still make money, they'd be open. They're closing because there's no one going shopping because we're being told to stay indoors, rightfully so. But then the government needs to, if they, get, if they want to press the pause, then press the pause, press the pause for everyone. Mm. Um, it, it doesn't make sense. And, I, and to the point you were saying, like you'll get a stimulus package now, um, but that might, that's the next month. Like what's, 
the next six months look like? Um, how does retail not only recover, but they've needed help for years. I mean, you, the landlords have always charged high rent. It's, a, it's, always, it's been a massive issue. The Westfields of the world, mm. I've been involved in businesses where we're stuck in, stuck in leases. So now those businesses are going to fold quite quickly because like us living month to month, a business is like that. Mm. So if they can't press pause because they continue to be charged, we're going to see more, more businesses go down. I think my last year of retail, the company I worked for, they read out a list at a meeting I was at and it was something like 70 well-known retailers had gone within like the previous three years. What's that going to look like in another month? Uh, so it is interesting. There's, that, like, there's no doubt the world we will go back to will be quite different. And I think we're wrong to say, like, I've spoke to my mum more times in the last two weeks than I did the whole of last year, which is terrible. Um, I'm on a WhatsApp group. <laughs> My sister's told me, join a WhatsApp group because I can't, it's too expensive to call you. I don't want WhatsApp, I don't want Instagram, I don't want Facebook. I've joined, I've joined WhatsApp and it's great, we're all talking. My son's on it as well, so he's got a phone. Um, and that's fantastic, but that's not going to continue. Like, I'm not going to say to my mum, oh, I'm really sorry, after this is all over, I'll call you every week. Because I'm not going to, normal life will, will continue. But what I am going to do is make the most of now, right? Um, I don't know what the future holds for my role. I might get a call and go, actually, that we can never have you back. Um, the gym role's gone, so I don't, but I can't, I can't worry about that where I can cover my mortgage, thanks to my wife. Um, but we are definitely living in the now. We're having a, we're having a good time as a family. We've got, a, we've got a, a house championship on the fridge, any board game. We, you win points at the end of the virus. We'll tally it up and see who's won. Um, I've been doing yoga in the garden with my mother-in-law and wife in the morning. We've gone up to the football club, which is just up the road every other day. And we do a workout. I mean, these are stuff we just never do. We do it by ourselves. Um, you're probably asking where are the kids when you're doing this. They're on Xbox, but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. We pay for it when we get back. But but now, now is good, but I can't project the future because I don't know what it looks like, but it will look very different. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, good, 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 good points, Martin. We, none of us can project into the future, can we? I've been saying to some people lately, if someone told me a couple of weeks ago I'd be doing a podcast, I would have laughed at them, but <laughs> here I am doing a podcast. So no one knows what's around. Yeah, I could see you doing a podcast. I knew that was coming. Yeah, right. Thanks. <laughs> You're the only one, I think. Um, but you don't think... It's, it's interesting. I've been... Um, uh, speaking to people, and I'm hopeful that some of these changes for the good, whether it's speaking to your mum more often, and I've been doing that as well. The weekly chat's probably gone to a every second day sort of chat. Um, you know, yoga with your with your wife and your mother-in-law in the backyard. You don't reckon there's much chance that some of that will continue on when, um, you know, we come out the other end of this virus? No, because we're all people and we're all selfish and we'll get on with our own lives. But... <laughs> But that doesn't matter if we're doing it now. Like, do it now. It's like a New Year's resolution. Mm. Like, do you keep it? But do it now. You know, even friends locally. You know, there's a, two or three friends um, locally that I'm texting every day. I'm asking how, how, you know, I've got a mate who's a plumber. You know, what's going on in his world? You know, he's worried if anything goes wrong in hospitals where they work in. Um, his wife's a nurse. Um, you know, it's making us, it's making me ask them more questions about them as opposed to meeting them and having a kick of a football. Um, that's great, but it won't continue. When it's all over, we'll get on with our life, which is fine. It's fine, but just um, make the most of it now. My wife's telling me I'm too happy, but rather that than moping around the house, I am enjoying, I don't like spending time with my kids. They, they're all nuts. I only <laughs> like, I'm not, I don't, I haven't got a Facebook account where i put nice pictures of them on and say look at the drawings we've made but i won't lie i'm really enjoying hanging out with them i'm enjoying hanging out with my wife it's great i'm i'm probably locked away with the best person i could be locked away with but if you asked me that a few weeks ago yeah hell on earth um, so make them i suppose my point is just make the most of now don't set crazy targets just we're all put in this situation just um 
enjoy it, make, make the most of it and try not to worry about the future because we don't know what that holds. What will happen is it will, we already know that it is going gonna, is gonna to pass. China are beginning to get back to some sort of normal life. Um, Italy, the death rate is terrible. Um, but each day we're hearing that the infections are less. You read all these different reports, you know, well, there's one report that the UK are half infected anyway. So we know that, we know that it will get back to normal. Um, and that is still terrible. There's, you know, there's, gonna be, there's so, many, so much tragedy and deaths within that. But our normal life will come back, but it will look quite different. Um, it would be worth sitting in now, just that every day is getting worse and worse and worse. And there's no light. You know, we could be looking at China that could be they're, they're three months ahead of us. Their, free, their next three months could be even worse. But we're not. We're looking at them and going, oh, hang on. It's, it's, it's getting better there. Um, so we know that we will go back to we're not all going to be stuck inside. Um, where Australia is lucky and New Zealand have been brilliant is we've looked at Europe and said, well, they've made a right mess of that. And uh, <laughs> The Prime Minister has thanked Australians for listening. I think we have the Bondi Beach thing um, where everyone was a bit stupid, but we, we, we didn't really understand. But we've seen what's happening in Europe and I think we're listening. Um, that's great. And I think we're, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a professional. I don't, I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out, but I think we are learning from, look, I mean, you look at Trump, I mean, crikey. Apparently his approval rate's gone up. I mean, should we, should we be annoyed with Trump or Americans? I, you know, everyone says how the last guy would have done, you know, Obama. We thought him that Bush. So we forget that. We all say what an idiot Trump is, and he is. But, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. It's, just, it's all a bit nuts. Enjoy what's happening now. Enjoy being having some time with your family the only reason i do yoga is because i can't sit still i can't sit and meditate and i'm presented with a chance now to ask my wife more questions about a job ask my kids more stuff about their school and actually be interested in it because i'm not thinking of what i've got to do later so there, there's positives in everything and opportunity there'll be other business opportunities from this so mm. yeah Martin, no, i was just going to say um it's interesting a couple of things that come to mind firstly it's interesting you mentioned china because um we're actually uh, all things going well we've got a guest tomorrow uh who's from china in beijing so yeah uh, be interesting to hear whether that is indeed how um how she's seeing um the situation that it is improving the second yeah. thing is um you, you've brought up something about um the idea that sometimes you think things are going to be bad and then they're actually when you're faced with the reality you just adapt to it and it, um, it brought me back to, uh, I'm not usually a big person on quotes, but it brought me back to a quote that I love from Seneca, who's a um, philosopher. And it's, it goes something like this, or I'll get it up. Um, Set aside a certain number of days during which you shall be content with the scantest, the cheapest fare, with the coarse and rough dress, saying to yourself all the while, is this a condition that I feared? So in other words, it's the idea that giving yourself i mean talking about being able to take this experience the learnings that occur from this forward it's it's the idea that maybe you can actually um you can set aside time for yourself throughout a year or however long to remember that if you don't have those fancy things that you you might be able to do if you get that that promotion or um you've got that extra money that it's not actually that bad mm. and i guess at the same time while i'm saying that i am aware that there are some people that are it's not just a case of um of missing out on the on the luxury items it's it's a case of survival so i don't want to say that in a way which is disrespectful and and you know undermines the fact that people will really be struggling but i think for a lot of people it is worth remembering every now and then that you know it actually isn't that bad if you if you had to live with you know 30 percent less income you could do it it might be a, it might be a bit of an adjustment but you could do it um yeah. what do you guys think about that um yeah Simon? i like that quote, quote too um Grigsy. Uh, i think i know where you heard that one mate um but uh 
Yeah, it, it, that speaks to my sort of environmental background as well. That, um, um, you know, one of the, the problems with um, um, trying to help the environment is, you know, consumption and, and use of natural resources and all that sort of stuff. And um, hopefully through times like this, we realise that we don't need to be constantly buying um, furniture for the house or upgrading the car or, um, you know, flying overseas to Bali for the annual holiday or whatever, that um, it's actually, um, you know, a good opportunity, like what Martin's been saying, to to reconnect with your kids and your family and go, shit, there's actually a reason why I married this person and I actually like the kids and um, I can get enjoyment and satisfaction and well-being out of just hanging around playing board games or whatever it might be. Um, the Bali that, one is a good one. Sorry, Simon, I'll interrupt you. That's all right, mate. Go for it. Um, when I did my yoga teacher training, we, you, you do it for weeks in Melbourne and then you all go to Bali and meet other parts of like the Sydney um, group and the Perth group. And, and yeah, it's fantastic. It's a beautiful resort. You, you just, you, you just treated, you're relaxing, you're studying, but you, you're very well looked after. And us Westerners go over there, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the IB for the Aussies, right? We go over there and behave stupid or we have to go over there and relax and be pampered. And I remember sitting in the, sitting in the resort, looking out the, at the beach and there's kids there just picking up shells in um, carrier bags. You know, why we're there, we're there being pampered and we need our yoga time and, you know, it's just complete that just doesn't make sense to me. Whereas now we're like, oh no, what's gonna happen? My football's gonna stop. My, what's gonna happen with my job? Like um, all, these, um, all these problems that we're so worried about life ch changing and we weren't ready for it. We all went out and brought loads of toilet rolls. I didn't. Um, <laughs> I've got enough now though. But we all went we all went nuts because we we're not strong enough for it. We we can't handle it. We can't handle the change. Um, the, the Bali one is a good. Whenever I hear Bali, I always think of just Westerners camping. Mm. Mm. Uh, you, you, all of you are bringing out something really important, and I, I'm I'm torn here because I know the the purpose of our show is to look at how well-being looks in a pandemic. But for me, that means dealing with reality, and what you're bringing up here. Um, with these stories, <sighs> Seneca was a stoic, right? So, <laughs> you know, stoics are all about just copying it, you know, you can handle it. And there's a truth to that, right? We as people really overestimate things that are bad, right? We look into the future, if something bad is going to happen to us, we think it's going to be way worse than it actually is. And we're actually really poor at predicting the future, you know, we think we're going to be so happy if we win the lotto, and that's not true either, you know? day or two later, we're pretty much back to normal. So, you know, our ability to perceive and judge is impaired and pretty much humans can cope with anything. Yeah, anything that doesn't kill us will make us stronger. But there's like an underlying point in here that kind of digs, just, just scratches me wrong, which is not acknowledging the inequality, right? So first off, the reason coronavirus exists and the reason why it was spread is because rich people did rich people things, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the fact that privilege and wealth is not only causing this virus, but is protecting people from this virus, right? So, you know, for a lot of us, we have the wealth to sit back and go, well, we can take a bit of a cut. Oh, it's going to be sad. I'm not going to be able to watch my football this year. What was me? Right. Whereas, you know, for other people, and I'll, I'm going to include myself in that, me and my partner have been living on, you know, in Australia, what would be considered underneath the poverty line for a while now, because we're, we're very conscious and we're trying our best to, to only live with what we need. For people like me, and I'm probably at the upper band of that, there are many people way lower than me. They have no protection from this virus, right? They don't have access to so much stuff. And it's the poor people that are going to get hit the hardest. And that to me is kind of like, that's what I want to talk about. You know, if we had a, 
a way of approaching that positively. If we understood inequality was very hard at work here. I have a friend from Switzerland the other day that was talking about, you know, how do I take the wealth that I have now as a Swiss banker in Switzerland and give that to the people that need it more right now because I don't need it. Yeah. And across a whole world, that's true. There are people that just don't need that much toilet paper. Right. Mm -hmm. And how do we get that to the people that do need it? I think what what is here is an opportunity. And I kind of disagree with you a little bit, Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 but I completely agree that most people are thinking this way. This is going to stop and I'm going to go back to normal. What I really want to challenge people to do is go, this is going to stop and I'm not going to go back to normal. How do we go back to a new thing that doesn't let this happen again? You know what I mean? That, yeah, I'll, I'll put that to you guys. That's my challenge. Right? What, what, what could we do um, as a community, as a society, as a globe? to make something like that happen. Yeah, well, Akesh, um, great points there, mate. We're pretty much on time, um, but we might have, yeah, a couple of minutes left for anyone who wants to chuck anything in there. Um, otherwise, yeah, we might come back to it, that, this sort of stuff in another episode, because this, yeah, really striking at some big issues for me that, that um, I'm sort of grappling with as well. Um, well, Akesh's um, point. I think what he said about the the government not worrying about business too much and starting with the people that need it the most, yeah. um, but you're not going to see that happen. So, I mean, in Queensland, they're doing the voting today. Don't mix, but can you please come to the polling station and vote for us? I mean, what message is that sending? Oh, my crikey. <laughs> yeah. oh, That's know. incredible. I didn't even know about that. Thanks yeah. for sharing yeah. that. But yeah, Polling stations are open. Don't go to the beach, but go and vote. Mm. Incredible. Uh, mm. All right, Martin. Um, that's been awesome, mate. I can't believe we've yeah we've, we've gone over time already. But uh, <laughs> is there anything, mate, that uh, we haven't touched on tonight that you that you'd wanted to sort of bring up or get across to people who are listening? Uh, for all my friends in England, you're all right. For all my Aussie friends, how you doing? And to me, mum, I love you, mum. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Good on you, mate. That's probably the best uh, response to that question we've had so far. And Brilliant. I just want to—I want to capture it because, like, Martin's, you know, we we touched a lot across a lot of things. We touched on a lot of things this uh, podcast, but at the end of the day, Martin, you keep it simple and you stay true to it, right? make the most of the moments that you have and you just did it again there uh, i think that's the best advice so um thanks for that man no thanks for having me thank you keep it up good work thanks martin so to everybody out there listening just the usual request to share like and subscribe to the show um spread the word get other people on board hopefully they'll get something out of it as well otherwise uh, we'll see you next time and you stay healthy world <laughs>